So I got to ask you this. So I started off in a background in finance, as you know. You started off in finance and you went to the MBA. What made you, did you think that getting the PhD was just a continuation of that finance journey? Or were you planning on shifting into quantitative finance as a whole? Did you see that as like a, an upcoming trend or kind of what's the background um, on that? Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I got introduced to finance in my third year of a Bachelor of Commerce degree at University of Toronto. And um, I didn't really know what it was until then. And, um, you know, what, you know, I, what appealed to me about it was just that it was applying math. And um, I always loved math. So I love to see it applied. And um, sure enough, it was. And it was, you know, I mean, it was like I learned portfolio theory and I could see quadratic forms being used to calculate variances of portfolios. And I thought, wow, that's that's really cool. So so anyway, um, I actually, after getting this Bachelor of Commerce degree, I actually went and spent a year at um, the predecessor, PwC, called uh, Coopers and Librand, one of the predecessors. And um, and anyway, so I ticked and bopped, as we call it. It's, it's a term for auditing for a year. And um, I re- it was like uh, not much fun, to be honest. And not very intellectual. <laughs> so I realized, you know, hey, maybe uh, this finance subject that I like so much, maybe it's worth getting deeper into. So I went, I went and got an MBA majoring in finance. And um, luckily, if I went to U of T where I did my undergrad, it would only take a year. So, so instead of the usual two. So I did it that way. And, um, you know, I realized in that year that, you know, indeed finance is a great topic. So, so I did apply to those three California schools and, and, um, and then, you know, went off to UCLA with the idea of getting a, just a finance PhD, not quantitative finance per se. Okay. All right. So, you know, so, I mean, uh, the PhD I got was in the Anderson, was now called the Anderson School of Management, although when I got there, it wasn't yet named. And, um, you know, the finance professors there were like top of the field, as I was told. And, but they weren't like, let's call them quantitative finance professors. They were superstars in like ma- mainly empirical finance, actually. We used to joke that UCLA was the University of Chicago at Los Angeles. Uh, there were many <laughs> University of Chicago um, PhDs there on the faculty and it was you know, mostly empirical but my own interests sort of did tend to the quantitative so in my second year I took an option pricing class taught by a, um, a, a guy who had a PhD in both physics and finance and um, you know I started to realize hey this is like fun stuff so so when I came out on the job market I had several offers it um, I chose a place which was Cornell which was sort of known to be fairly quantitative Mm-hmm. And in particular, there's a professor there, Bob Jero, is well known in quantitative finance. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so I went there, I mainly worked with him. And when I was there, uh, luckily enough, this guy named David Heath was there in the operations research department. And he's like the Heath and Heath Jero Morton. He's, he was very quantitative. Um, so I started to really get into it. And it was really fortunate I went there because um, actually, like, um, Heath and Jero decided to just offer a uh, sort of a class on quantitative finance, you know, aimed at doctoral students, but like, I was actually not that quantitative at that time, even though I had the finance PhD. So I took the class and um, it really opened my eyes to how deep a field it was. And I was sort of lucky to be um, learning quantitative finance when it was just getting off the ground. So, um, so this would be 1988, ancient history, but the first uh, math finance or quantitative finance conference was actually at Cornell in 88, my first year there. And, um, you know, it was actually kind of a watershed event. There's a photo of all the participants standing on the steps of what's called Malat Hall. And it's got some of the, you know, superstars of quantitative finance there. Uh, Fisher Black was there. Um, and, uh, you know, other big names like Steve Shreve and Carrie Back. And, you know, it was, it was also kind of a nice mix of um, sort of business school finance professors like Jero, but also pure math people as well. Okay. Did- so like, like Shreve and Karatsas, for example, they were both there and Chifu Huang, who's actually a finance guy, but is known for his, his, his math skills. So, so anyway, it was, it was a really good event. And um, so that, uh, from that point on, I basically realized that quantitative finance was the year I wanted to be in. And, um, you know, so, so, um, so I worked in it and, um, you know, sort of one thing, Ithaca is not that far from New York City. 
four hour drive and uh, I had a girlfriend who lived in Manhattan. So I was in, Ithaca, or sorry, I was in Manhattan, see her. And so one thing led to another, I started consulting for, for various firms. Um, one firm that did FX options software, for example, and needed someone to just figure out how to price barrier options. And so I, um, I ended up, you know, consulting and liking it. So um, I spent a summer in my, I spent the sec, like, so when you're in academia, you're basically supposed to, you know, keep your nose to the grindstone, publish papers and work towards tenure. And, you know, while I realized that was the game, I did also realize that there's a great big world out there beyond <laughs> academia. And um, so, um, and my, um, in the summer after my second year at Cornell as a professor, I got an offer to be a sort of an intern at Susquehanna, uh, which is a pretty well-known options trading firm, mm -hmm. the Susquehanna Investment Group. And they're located in Philadelphia, well, more precisely, uh, Bala Kinwood. And um, so anyway, so I went there for the summer, which was a bit unusual for a professor to do, but I realized I was kind of naive when it came to the real world at that point. And um, it really helped me to sort of understand exactly where, you know, what works and doesn't work with the theory. And um, so when I came back, it was, um, I was a, a different person really. Um, so my teaching ratings improved. And um, I also had all these, you know, connections now to, to industry. So I started to send my better students to Susquehanna and um, the, um, you know, and just in general, be more in touch, started speaking at industry conferences. And, um, you know, by the time, you know, you know 96 came around, um, I was dating a woman who's now my wife and she was graduating and uh, this Ithaca is pretty small. So, so we, we moved to, we moved to Manhattan. Okay. And um, so I joined Morgan Stanley in their equity derivatives group. And, um, you know, at that time, like exotics were hot and, um, you know, things like barrier options, but also cliques, forward start options, um, compound options, exchange options. So, so anyway, so um, I started as a VP, uh, which is an industry, like you probably know there's four levels in banks. So this was the second lowest level. So they sort of gave me some credit for, for eight years as a professor, but not too much credit, which is fair. I mean, I, I thought that was fair. And, um, so, um, and um, you know, it, it was my first year in industry at Morgan Stanley. It was just like completely eye-opening. I mean, it was just like, there, I realized that in my area, you know, which was options, it, they were so far ahead of academia. So, so, I mean, it was a really good equity derivatives place and it still is. And um, so I learned a lot and, um, you know, and then let's say um, I just kind of like the way I would describe my 20 years in on, on the street is, you know, I would stay, let's say somewhere between five and 10 years at a place, but then move. And, um, you know, often it was always when I moved, it was like um, a diagonal move, I'd call it, meaning it was like upper rank. And, um, and maybe in something slightly different, you know, so, so mm -hmm. I, I, I kind of didn't want to get completely pigeonholed in what's say equity derivatives where I started. And, um, and often it would be to a place that let's say wanted to do what it, I was currently doing, but you know, let's say the bread and butter was actually something else. So it meant that I could learn their bread and butter while contributing. So, um, so that, um, you know, kept, that's basically every time I switched, I moved up a level. So I started the second lowest level, but then when I went to Bank of America, I was at the third lowest, or sorry, the, um, I went the wrong way. Sorry, the, well, upper rank, upper rank. Yeah. And then to Bloomberg, they don't really have those levels. But when I went to Morgan Stanley, I was an MD, which is managing director of the top level. You know, I guess I was leading a pretty big quant group called Market Modeling, um, about 70 people in four different offices around the world. Um, and it was very time constrained, okay? Like um, you just have no time. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so when I started the role in 2010, I mean, I basically did nothing but, you know, respond to email and meet people for a year. And um, it was kind of like not so satisfying. So, um, so a friend of mine named Attilio Mucci he, had, he sent me an email just sort of asking a technical question. And um, 
like to my surprise, I spent the next three days trying to answer his question, ignoring everything else. <laughs> and, you know, it was like, uh, it's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was just, you know, so, so I kind of at that point realized it's, I'm really an academic at heart. Um, I didn't mind, you know, the, you know, the high pay and also just the high quality of people around me, um, you know, that you see on wall street. And, um, so, so I stayed for quite a while after that, but Anyway, when NYU made me an offer in, in 2016, I took it. Um, it was a um, tenured offer, which I knew was important. Um, if you're going to have mm-hmm. any kind of voice in how the program is going to you know, proceed. And it was a department chair as well. So, so anyway, so it was a good offer. So I figured I'd, you know. 20 years is enough. And um, I, uh, you know, you can, there are people who just want to rake in as much cash as they possibly can, but I'm not one of those people. So 